We will now go on to illustrate a simple workflow of a project with JIT. We will use the test JIT project that we created, copy it to our PC and do a few things with it. You can see in uh, this slide a summary of a bunch of JIT commands we will use. JIT clone is used to copy a war repository, including the history locally, while JIT init is used to create, to initialize a new repository starting from an existing local folder, supposedly with some documents inside. When you create a file in the directory acting as a repository, this is not automatically added to the repository itself. It is not tracked. You need to uh, JIT add the file uh, explicitly. Once you have done some work on your project, you want to save its current snapshot. Do it frequently, several times a day, perhaps. For this, use JIT commit dash a dash m followed by a message under quotes. The parameter a is there because JIT support uh, another intermediate stage of staging files for commit. While it is a good practice, I admit I generally skip it and I use directly the parameter a to commit all files in the repository, including those unstaged for commit, but not the untracked files. As said, to include a file to a commit, you first need to add it to the repository. We will try some branch workflow, and uh, we will create the branch with JIT branch, and then JIT checkout to switch to the newly created branch. You can also do the two operations using a single command with JIT checkout uh, uh, B. When you are in a branch and make a commit, the commit will be registered as part of that specific branch. When you want to merge the work you have done in that branch in the main branch, you just use JIT checkout main to go to the main branch and then JIT merge the name of the branch you did the work. When you want to check the code on other remotes, normally on the GitHub remote and update your code with that remote code, you run a JIT fetch or a JIT pull with the difference given by the fact that the first JIT fetch download the new content but doesn't attempt yet to merge it, while the second one, JIT pull, does. Finally, you have here listed a group of commands to provide information concerning the repository, as a JIT remote to list the remote or remotes associated to the repository, JIT status to inform you about the presence of modified, added or untracked files, JIT log to show a log of all commits and JIT diff to compare versions between commits or between individual uh, files. I prefer to perform JIT operations using these commands on a terminal, as once you have learned them, they will work everywhere. They are, however, hundreds of uh, JIT uh, GUI applications where you can perform these operations using some click and uh, the program run the JIT commands for you. The problem is that uh, then you need to learn each of these tools independently. But for example, to analyze uh, the JIT log in a nice interactive way, they could be useful. 
Here I have also listed some resources where you can go in deep on a JIT. And uh, yes, there are also hundreds of books on JIT, même en français. The first thing is to retrieve the project that we did created a few slides earlier on github.com. The manual way would be to open a JIT terminal and there issue the command JIT clone and the URL of the repository to clone. You can get this URL in the GitHub project page. This will download the project locally, but has become a bit cumbersome from when GitHub introduces some new security improvements. I hence show you here the automated way using the specific JIT client that is embedded in Visual Studio Code. It will take care of dealing under the hood with things like authentication. So we first need to tell our editor to sign in to GitHub, provide a bunch of authorizations, and then we can clone locally our test JIT project. From Visual Studio Code, we then type uh, Ctrl, Shift, and P to open uh, the command palette. And uh, we type JIT clone. Here is it. And we choose clone from GitHub. We now have to give some authorizations to GitHub. This opens a, a web browser, so we can continue. And uh, uh, GitHub, uh, we um, authorize uh, uh, GitHub. And uh, we can now uh, choose uh, the uh, test JIT uh, repositories. And we can uh, uh, choose the folder where uh, we want uh, to uh, we want to to save it and uh, we choose open in new windows and uh, yes i trust the authors okay so now we have uh, downloaded our test JIT repository and we see that there are three files uh, the readme read the license and the, the GT new file that has been added automatically when we did open the repository on uh, github we can now work with uh, this repository we'll uh, add a file to the folder edit it a bit add it to the repository and make our first commit. So the fact to add the file to the folder doesn't make that file automatically be part of the repository. We still need to do it manually with a JIT add file name. In your PC, it is likely that the JIT will raise an error when you do the commit. See, he doesn't know who you are. Before the first commit, we need hands to declare our identity, the one that will be stamped in the commits with these two commands. This is required only the first time you use JIT. As the name global here implies, this information is shared between different projects. After we do the commit, we then push back our modifications to GitHub. So let's start by adding a file test.gl to the folder by right clicking here on the Explorer panel. If this panel is closed, you can click here on this icon to open it. It may be on the right or on the left, depends on how you have configured Visual Studio. So uh, new file test.gl GL. The file now appears here on the editor panel. So we can start editing it. Let's say that we had uh, print ln hello world. And we also run it with Julia by pressing Alt 
enter. Now it is going to take some time until uh, Julia and uh, above all uh, the various packages that uh, Visual Studio automatically add will finish to initialize. When Julia is uh, ready, it prints in uh, this terminal on the bottom the string hello world. We save the file with Ctrl S and uh, we can also modify our readme file and add some more uh, details. We type again Ctrl S to save. For the next specific JIT steps, I could use the integrated Visual Studio JIT extension. The commands of the tools are available by clicking this icon, but I prefer to do it manually, issuing JIT commands in the terminal. Here I am on Linux and I click Terminal, New Terminal. And uh, this open a new terminal here on the bottom where I can type the JIT commands. In Windows you have something similar, but it is a specific JIT terminal. The first thing I check the status of my local repository with a JIT status. Here JIT tell me something interesting. It tell me that I am on uh, the same branch of uh, origin main, where origin is the short name for the JIT repository on uh, GitHub. It has been automatically added when I did clone the repository and main is the branch where I, I am uh, currently. And uh, JIT tells me that I have one file that is modified, the red readme that we have here, and one file that you can see here that is still untracked. It tells me, okay, there is a file in the folder, but I don't know anything about it. So we can add it with git add test.jl. And if you go back to git uh, status, it now tells me, okay, I have a new file and a modified one. Now it's time to make a commit. So JIT commit with uh, the parameter A because we didn't stage anything explicitly. So we need to add all the files and I give a message my first commit. Okay. I can run again JIT status. And you can see a, that is telling me working tree clean. That is my local repository considered to the repository in its uh, latest version, at least in the current branch. At this point, I can finally push back my repository to GitHub, git push. And you can see that the files are sent through the internet and uh, propagated to the repository on uh, GitHub. So if I go back on the GitHub page of the project and uh, I refresh the page, I should see, and here it is, that uh, one file has been added and the modification that I did locally has now been accounted here in the GitHub repository. We will now attempt a minimal branch workflow where we will make some work on the main branch, some work on the alternative branch, and we will see how JIT can be smart in uh, merging uh, the work done in these different branches. So let's go back again uh, on our test.jl file 
and uh, add some text on the line uh, 4, 7 and 9. The line numbers are given here on the side. We save and commit the, the file. Up to now, we have always worked in a single branch, the main branch. We can see it by typing JIT branch without anything after. This list all the local branches and the current one is highlighted with a star. We can see here that we have only main. So let's create a new branch. We name it temp with JIT branch temp. Now that we created the branch, Let's move on it with JIT checkout temp. If I type again JIT branch, I see that now I am on the JIT on the branch temp. I now edit the test the file test.gl on line 9 I save and I commit I now can uh, switch back to the main branch with JIT checkout main. Oh, the modifications that I did in the branch temp went away. When I issued the command JIT checkout main, Indeed, JIT updated the files on disk with the current correct version for the branch where I am now. You can tell me, but this is dangerous. I could have uh, uh, write some, uh, overwrite some edits I did on the file. Well, not really. If I had made a change in a file of the repository in the branch temp, and not commit these modifications afterwards, JIT would have spotted it and refused me to move to the new uh, branch. So I can switch branch only if I commit my edits like I did here and uh, my working directory is free or if I explicitly renounce to these uh, uh, modifications. Let's now change something on uh, line five. save and uh, commit. Notice that the commit is associated with uh, the main branch. I can compare different branches with JIT diff. So JIT diff main temp. And here JIT or better the diff program reports me in details all the differences in the various files between the two branches. I exit 
the diff program with Q. And it is time now to merge the temp branch. I give JIT branch to be sure that I am on the main branch. To merge a branch, I use the command JIT branch and the branch to merge. This pick up the modifications to merge that has been done in the branch to merge and apply them in the current branch. So JIT merge temp. When it does the merge, JIT creates a new commit and it suggests a default commit title. I accept it with Ctrl X and then uh, Y. Actually, it's not necessary in this case. So the merge and the commit are, are done. I can give a last check with a JIT log where I see all my commits in the different branches. Again, if you use a graphical uh, uh, JIT client, this can be represented very nicely in a tree format. Finally, I push my modifications and I delete the temporary branch. JIT push and JIT branch the temp.